So as Kelly mentioned, I've been doing backup for quite some time. So you're, you're probably thinking I'm a little nuts, right? I mean, this isn't exactly the most glamorous part of IT is to do backups. And so uh, I often give the analogy, it's like watching your cat sleep. Uh, it's about that exciting, right? Is doing backups. And, and, and of course, it's relegated to having to do a lot, for a lot of environments, it's relegated to that tape library and having to manage the tapes that you're dealing with both on site and taking them off site for protection of your company. But today I thought really we, you know, I brought a bunch of slides that, and we can run through a couple of them and tell you a little bit about Exagrid, but really I thought, you know, it, there, it, I have spent a day or two uh, dealing just with backups and I thought we could have this be a really good di discussion about what, what's working in your environments and what's not working and what things you like and don't like. Of course, we've been doing backups since the dawn of time, uh, since our data has always been important to us. It really doesn't matter which company or which or what you do in your organization to your organization that data that you've been gathering whether it's your customer information or whether it's processes about your the products you develop whatever that is it's your keystone material right i mean that's what your company's based on and to lose that could be devastating for organizations. I tell you, uh, you know, as, as any one of us had a loss of data, even in our personal life, uh, maybe with a hard drive failure or something on a PC that you used to own. I mean, we've known, I mean, just on a simple basis. I personally had one of these little drives that you can get at the local store that I had my photos on. And uh, for years it was great. I came home from a business trip and the little light, instead of being green, was red. And I went, well, that can't be. It can never be red. And of course, I looked at it, and the little mirror broke. There's, you know, the little drives in there were mirrored, and so that had come apart. And, and as I'm sitting there thinking, I'm thinking, well, you know, I've got every picture that my family's ever taken since like 1997, and my wife's not going to be too excited that I've just lost every baby photograph of my whole family. Now, of course, that was just a minor tragedy in my personal life, and and luckily for me, where I live, um, I remember seeing a sign that said data recovery and so of course I gingerly take this little box in my hands and I drive it down to this place and I walk in and 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 these two guys in lab coats look at me like what are you doing here and I said it died can you help it you know and I said I will pay you any amount of money and and what I failed to tell you is is there was actually all, like the last six years of my taxes in TurboTax were saved in there too right uh, so I could just do that and have that information available and so I'm still and you're thinking, you know, I need that stuff. And, and so the gentleman kindly said, you know, yes, you know, took my name, phone number, and I said, you know, whatever it takes, I'll pay for it. And he goes, well, we, we've never seen one of these little boxes that, that I had brought in. And so uh, he said, he'll, he'll give me a call. So about a month goes by, I get a call and I go down and I said, what's the verdict? And he goes, you know what? <laughs> That's kind of an interesting little box you got there. Uh, it, it was kind of challenging, but we were able to get all your stuff back. And I was like, oh, this, thank heavens. I was just like, you know, this is wonderful. I had actually given him another drive, put it on and all that stuff. And he, I said, well, what do I owe you? And he goes, oh, are you kidding? We, it's free. We're just going to give it to you because we learned so much about this little box and, and what it does with data and all the mirroring and everything. And I said, I owe you something. I mean, you've probably spent, no, he goes, if you, you'd pay us for the amount of time, it would be millions of dollars uh, that, that you would owe us right now. And because we just would tinker with it for, you know, hours on end, uh, trying to figure out, figure it out and the corruption and everything. And I, and I said, well, I'm, I'm short of a million bucks today uh, to, to pay your bill, but you know, I'll be happy to buy you lunch. And so I took by a gift card later on. And, and, but you know, sometimes we don't have that availability. But what I did, it, what, what it happens to me is what happens in our company. When those type of things happen, when servers fail, right? Uh, when we accidentally put the new antivirus update on and it crashes the whole server. Oops, that's never happened, right? Or you've put the you know Microsoft patch on and suddenly the server doesn't behave the way we want and we can't access a particular volume. Uh, I'm sure all of us have experienced those type of things. So data loss is critical to any business. So when we talk about getting the data back, we're talking about business continuity, right? And when I talk about that, I'm like, you need access to your data now. Okay, and for a lot of folks, they'll do that on a primary SAN. Uh, how many of you have a primary SAN in your environment? Maybe uh, in that. Okay, so somebody throw out some of the SAN vendors that, that you know about that you probably have. EMC. EMC is the big one, right? You know, uh, their Clarion and other lines that they have. Next SAN, I heard. Anybody else? Uh, 
HP. HP, the EVAs have been around forever. Now you've got Left Hand that they purchased recently. You've got the three par as well from HP. So you got a whole line of products there to choose from. Uh, you know, that, that industry has just taken off in the last 10 years. And of course, that's centralized data storage is where it's at. But now that everything's in one bucket, where's our vulnerability? That bucket, right? I mean, I had lunch with uh, Standard Insurance in Portland, Oregon, and, and the guy goes, Ron, man, I got to tell you, if it wasn't for my backup software and your ex, your ex did, we would have been dead. I would have had 300 engineers, or it's not Standard Insurance, sorry. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, no. No. Hoffman in Construction. Hoffman Construction. Thank you. I was thinking I'm seeing Standard Insurance tomorrow, uh, an existing customer. Uh, but Hoffman Construction, they're, they're a big commercial construction company in, in the Western U.S. Um, and, and basically said, look, if I wasn't able to get to all my data, we literally would have had to, you know, instantly from an appliance like an Exhibit or, or you know, getting it off quickly, I would have had to draw, you know, probably got in the car, drove about six, seven hours away, grabbed those tapes, brought them back, and then spent the rest of the evening restoring. I mean, this is the real world life that he lives in, and it was like, you know, just having a disk-based backup appliance or having our backups right here on disk easily restorable was huge for him, excuse me. And so <clears throat> that's, that's really you know, about business continuity. So all these primary storage devices, they, they, all can, they all can do snap, right? Snap technology takes a block of that uh, data and takes a picture of it. And then you can have as many snaps as typically as you want uh, for a week period. And so that's great. But we deal in the backup world. And that's really where you want to take all your data as a full image of it and put it somewhere else. Have it on site, but also take it off site. Um, I'll tell you, when, when we've talked with customers, as you can imagine, I deal with, with all sorts of organizations. I'll share one customer, and then I'm going to ask you a few more questions. Uh, one of my customers that I've been dealing with probably for the last five years at Exagrid is Concur Technologies. Anybody here, here know who Concur is? Uh, so they handle about 20% of the world's business travel. For example, Exagrid, EMC, all these companies we just mentioned, Dell, everybody else, HP, they all, as an employee of that company, if you're traveling on the company's dime, what you do is you go out to a website, you go ahead and uh, book your tickets uh, for your, your airfare, your hotel, car rental, all that stuff, and then uh, you know, that gets all done electronically, of course, and then you know, as we travel, there's a little iPhone app and you can actually go in and take a, you know, like at the end of the day today, you know, Kelly will make me pay the bill, I'm sure. Uh, no, I'm just teasing you, Kelly. So, so I'll just take a picture of the receipt and that then goes into the expense report side of their software. So they do the travel and they do the expense report and it is really cool stuff. And when I first started talking with them, each customer of theirs was a SQL database to keep track of that stuff. And they had about 6,000 customers. So that means 6,000 databases, right? That they needed to back up, well, like you do with database. How often do you back up databases? Anybody here work with databases? You, you do them every day, right? Nick, I mean, you do, databases gotta be backed up every day. Uh, there's just too much change that goes on within a typical organization that you want to let that run for more than a day. So at least every day. Now, they ran net backup. By the way, anybody ever run net backup in your organization? Anyway, okay. How about Commvault? Any Commvault people out there? Nick. Um, let's see. Backup exec? Okay, backup exec. Uh, they've got a new version just coming out, right? Uh, we're part of that rollout as well. We can talk more about that. Um, let's see. ArcServe. That goes back a long time. Back to my Novell days with NLMs. How's that? There's, there's the gray hair showing. So, ArcServe, uh, let's see, who have I missed? TSM, any TSM users in here or use that? Tivoli Storage, uh, no? Okay, what, who did I miss in the backup world? HP Data Protector, we mentioned HP before. So HP Data Protector, we've supported them for years now as well. So there's all these backup applications, we'll talk about that. Uh, but Concur used uh, Net Backup, and Net Backup basically, you know, uh, backs up all those SQL databases, and then, you know, every day. But you know what? They decided because these databases get used a lot, when the database gets used a lot, it gets kind of fragmented up, doesn't it? 
And so you want to do a thing called re-indexing. And that basically realigns the tables in a database to make it run faster. So at a certain percentage, and I think Concur used about a 30% fragmentation number, they would then re-index the, the database and back it up again, of course. And then as a customer, if we add or delete users, we can trigger a manual backup. So out of those three rules, backing up every day, uh, when they were too fragmented and they would get backed up and when a change was happening and you wanted to do a manual backup they were doing around 10,000 backups a night with those 6,000 customers and he, and, and he needed a system that was going to be able to handle that kind of performance as well as scalability because now that was five years ago I've had lunch with with uh, Sean this spring Sean now has over uh, 18,000 customers they do over 24,000 backups a night, okay, uh, on several grids of exagrid systems in various locations. And one thing that he tells me, he goes, Ron, I just love the scalability, you know, and the flexibility for me to right size every individual organization's needs, every site location's needs. And we'll talk about that. One of the things, and then Sean, by the way, is a good guy. If you ever wanted to, to talk with him, he's happy to take calls. He's just He's just kind of an open, honest person, which I really appreciate. So that's one of the customers. So we're talking about backups, and we're talking about how we make them better. Well, I'm sure as you can think about your backup environment, what's your number one goal when it comes to backups? This is where I'm going to pause. You get to actually, this is called user interaction. <laughs> this is where you guys get to give me answers. At least before the stake and everything else comes, because then you won't pay attention anymore. No, I'm just kidding. So you want to be able to back everything up within your window. There you go. Whatever that window is, right? I mean, because every organization sets up their own SLAs, right? Their service level agreements where they're going to say, we have to be able to get our data back within a certain amount of time, and we have to, have to, have to be able to back it up within a certain amount of time, right? It's an interesting discussion, because you talk to them at the time when nothing's wrong, and that SLA is really wide. Oh, sure. And then when everything goes down, all of a sudden it shrinks quite a bit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, when you first have that conversation, oh, we don't care. We can wait a couple days for that day to come back, right? And then soon as they're, all their stuff, as soon as the CEO's email is gone for, a, for an hour, he's like, this should have been back in like minutes. What's, what's going on here? I'm waiting. You know, I needed that email, right? That's exactly what happens. And so every company, this is probably the hard, one of the hardest things in IT is to get your company to actually agree on an SLA. Wouldn't you say? I mean, it, it just because you're going to have so many people, and it really does have to be dictated to us in IT to say, okay, this is the needs of my organization. This is what you know management says they want to have as their backup window. And, and your organization is going to vary. I know hospitals. I've got various organizations that, I mean, they have from 12 o'clock midnight to 5 a.m., and that's the only time they can do backups. And it has to fit within that window. You know, and, and other organizations, you'd have different needs and concerns that you have to address. So that's exactly right. Is first thing is how do we back it up as fast as possible? Because that's what every vendor that stands up here in a meeting like this is going to claim. We give you the fastest possible backups, right? Every vendor is going to give you that claim. Okay, I'm a, I'm included in that, right? Okay, I'm going to confess. I'm going to talk. We're going to talk about how we can do that today, and you can even tell me what's working for you. But really, the backups. I think you, to your comment is all about the restores. How quickly can we get that data back? And that's really more important, but yet it's never visible to anybody in the organization until it's needed, right? Um, and, and so we're going to talk about that. Uh, a lot of folks, too, we just had a call this morning, Kelly and I, where the, the gentleman was like, you know, DR is important to us. We need to make sure that, you know, as part of compliance or whatever, that our data is not only here, but we've got it over there as well in case something happened to here we can have that information spun up over there. So DR is definitely critical for a lot of organizations, whether it's just being safe and protecting your data. And more. I mean, that's really what you're doing with your tape libraries, right? You've got your data locally. The, the, you, you burn it onto a tape. You take it, and the truck picks it up and takes it to the hole in the hill. And, and then you feel in your mind, hey, we've, we're protected. We've got our data in two spots. So that's really what we want to agree with, too, is to have two places for our data. And so that's really what we're going to talk about today is how we can protect our data locally and how we can protect it off-site as well.
How's that for a very, very three hour long introduction? I only have another 682 slides, so we should be done by four. So, and is it me or did the t TV still look a little slanted? <laughs> That's, a, that's okay. We'll all look like this at the screen. Then it'll be right. Sorry for everyone over here. We're just kind of at a slant. We're okay over there? Um, so let's just real quick. I mean, it sounds like you guys have it figured out. A lot of good things about backup. We've, we've kind of generally talked about the environment, what's important to you. Actually, good thought about all this at the beginning, too. And, of course, like a lot of companies, you, you want to look at what we're trying to solve. And in talking with a lot of folks in backup, the problem that you want to solve is what we've been, we've been introduced. Fastest possible backups and fastest possible restores. Great technology can ab be applied to all of that, but really that's the two goals. And I think that's where a lot of organizations do get, uh, you know, confusing in their messaging because they'll talk about data migration management and a lot of other things, which may be very important. But at the end of the day, you really want your backups done very fast, kept them very secure, and have it to be restored very quickly. So we decided, okay, we could write backup software. And we could then have that software you know, gather up the data and then put it on something, something safe and secure, an appliance of some type. And then we thought, you know what? You've already purchased backup software. You, you as an organization has probably already made the decision right or wrong. And by the way, there is no greener pasture. Okay? If you're sitting here thinking, I hate my backup software, there's got to be something better. Guess what? They're not. They're, they're all really kind of have their plus and minuses. And I hate to tell you that because oftentimes we, we love parts about our backup software. And there's parts that are just, you know, really just painful and I could just be honest in front of you and say that every application is has those plus and minuses so uh, but it's good to test them out and see new vendors as they come to market but essentially we decided we want to be ubiquitous that's my word of the day calendar word okay we wanted to be able to work with everybody in other words you make the decision that's right for your company buy the software you think is going to work for you and we want to be able to work with that and that includes you know any backup software as well as any non-traditional processes like direct SQL writes things like that and so we wanted to work with everyone that's why you see lots of logos up there we want to make sure our product was very compatible with the way the backup software packages up the backup jobs. Does that make sense? Okay. And then of course our patented technology and everything is all on compression and deduplication. What we call delta zone deduplication. And I'll talk about that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on marketing stuff because well I wanted to promise to get you out at one and and uh, let you have your afternoon. So I'm just going to dive into some technology. But one of the things I will highlight real quickly is when I was an IT manage manager uh, in my organization, one of the things I loved was buyer's guides. And I don't know if you still use them today like I used them passionately back then. But well, back then, because of the gray hair, right? Uh, they were printed books that would come in the mail. And it was kind of cool because it was a giant catalog. And you could flip through. And if I had you know, a networking issue that I wanted to solve or whatever it was, was, I knew that this buyer's guide had probably evaluated the top 10 or 20 companies, rated them for me, and probably put them on a scale. And then I don't have to go through and start looking at all 10 of those, right? I can narrow, narrow it down to the top two or three. And I enjoyed that about buyer's guides because it saved me a whole lot of work and I could kind of vet out some of the players and non-players. But DCIG has kind of taken on that role in the industry. I don't know, some of you might be familiar with them. They do every couple of years, they refresh their buyer's guides and they do buyer guides in, in all sorts of different fields. So they're kind of nice. And oftentimes you can download those for free uh, without paying for a subscription. But um, I'm gonna skip the Infotech. But uh, the, the 2013, which was the end of last year, their last one, they ranked the top 10 products. They don't do it by company, they do it by product. Uh, this didn't change very much from the one two years earlier, because uh, we use that one a lot in our marketing messaging. But essentially, uh, you know, we took the top six slots out of the top 10 uh, with DIG, which is great. Now, since they did this report, we've actually come out with a new product, the EX21000, which I'll talk about today as well. I usually throw in that slide because, you know, oftentimes you're not going to spend time on, you know, 
product 15 through 20x or whatever, wasting your time trying to eval stuff at the bottom of the list. Lots of logos, lots of companies here in, in of course, uh, in Utah, in, in the uh, Intermountain area that, that are customers, and we'd be happy to, to share their names and that. But, but really, we've been around for 10 years, as Kelly said, got cu customers globally, customers that you know about, you know, Chevron and, and all sorts of other big names. But, you know, really, data is data, right? I mean, it just fits everybody. But again, as I was talking about, we have traditional backup applications. So think of us as the common target. Right, a server for, that's going to catch everything. Whether you're doing traditional backup application backups to us, or if you're doing application direct. In other words, every company that I've gone to, well, not every, but a lot of them, they'll have a database administrator, for example, that loves to do their own thing. They just don't want to adhere to the rules of IT. Hey, they're my databases. I'm backing them up the way I want. Right. So that's okay. So this is how they can actually go into SQL Manager or RMAN, define their own backup policies and procedures, and now gives them a target they can send those to. Okay? So it makes it very kind of nice that we can be a common repository for both your traditional backup software as well as just stuff from the applications, as well as doing any tar files and things like that. Does that make sense or any questions about that before we kind of go on? So, so Exagrid is an appliance company. Right? We don't make backup software. We don't make anything else other than just the target the, to work with your backup. Is that clear enough? Any questions? Are we okay? All right. So now there's a couple of different ways we could have came to market, which is the traditional storage model where you take and you build a server and you have a whole bunch of disks and you can build that out. Or you can do kind of a Lego approach. And there was newer companies that kind of came about and did this in the SAN and NAS market, like Left Hand, Equalogic, if you know that one from Dell. Uh, these are products that came to market in more of a stackable grow, you know, grow as you need to model. And we started looking at these two architectures and said, which one lends itself to backup the best? And we really liked the, the latter because the first one had such limitations with growth and scalability that we felt like the, the, when you can really mix and match and have components, we can right size every organization to their needs of size and kind of price accordingly, you know, helping everybody else, but also giving that scalability where what you buy today becomes an investment to everything in the future. So we decided to come up with a number of different modules. And again, think of this as like Legos. So you've got an EX1000, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then a 710, 13, and then we just announced, and I'll talk more about our EX21000, our flagship product. And again, these can be mixed and matched and combined together to form the solution that would be right for your environment. So let me tell you how easy my job is at Exagrid. So I'm really going to confess here, and this is the reason why I've been at Exagrid for eight years. Not because I love backup, it's just it's a, it's just a really easy job. I, you know, it's, you no, know, I'm just teasing you. Um, but one of the things that I love about my job is that we've made sizing and doing our systems really, really simple. And that is, we size around a full backup. So really it's just going down and looking at your backup structure and your backup software and saying, okay, I've got you know uh, so much data in my unstructured files maybe my word Excel you know stuff like that uh, files and then I've got some databases I've got email so you just add all that up and, and whatever your weekend full is for example maybe that's five terabytes great I'm gonna add some growth to it because I don't want to have you get something that's full on day one and then I'm going to ask you about retention. How long do you want to keep this data around on disk? Well, you could say, well, Ron, we do daily incrementals and weekly folds. Uh, we like to keep the weeklies around for a week or two. We like to keep the, or the dailies, I'm sorry, around for a week or two. We like to keep weeklies maybe for a month or so, maybe two months, and then the monthlies for a couple months. So I'll say, great. We'll go ahead and use the backup, you know, the size that you've told me. We'll take a look at the retention. And the growth, and we and we use that, and I put it in my little ca fancy calculator, um, which you know is is just a simple spreadsheet. It's not that hard, um, but it then tells me, hey, an EX five thousand, or in this case, if you had five terabytes of data, maybe I'd want to add some growth. Maybe the EX seven thousand, the next one up, would be the perfect appliance for you. And that's how simple it is. It's just really not designed to be rocket scientists. It's just really really supposed to be deployed very simply with that just kind of common math. Does that make sense with anyone? Uh, so that's really the, the key here is just growth and, uh, and retention and how much data you have. 
okay we do have a little site survey um, oftentimes Kelly will send that out it's kind of nice to have you fill that out and uh, send it back uh, it does ask you a few more questions about your virtual environment versus your physical one that kind of helps me out to know where you're kind of heading to as well uh, and, and to different growth so as you can see from the bottom of the slide we scale from 1 to 210 terabytes in what we call a grid and that's literally snapping these systems together okay and so uh, if you say well Ron I have 50 terabytes great I can put a couple of the 20 terabyte systems together to get my 50 terabyte or maybe two or three together and so again I can mix and match these and you're thinking well what happens when they fill up well it's as simple as just taking another appliance and connecting it into the grid okay it's just that easy so we really try to think about the whole process of of how you deploy and then and then grow later on so let's talk about a simple scenario first so if we have your backup software for example already deployed in your environment where you've got agents you've already installed on your servers and uh, you've now those agents are pointing backups uh, actually I should have asked is anybody in here actually do the backups for your organization you're the ones in charge I know Nick anyone else yeah so yeah so so you got you guys can keep me honest here and, and just you know yell hey Ron that's wrong but essentially you, you know that we've got the backup software most backup software comes with agents that then run agents are pieces of software that run on your production servers that gather up the data based on a backup jobs requirements okay so the backup job usually usually uses the well the, the agent uses the archive bit as part of the operating systems um, information to gather up the data whether it's been touched or not and so it gathers it up and it sends it to the backup server and then if you have a tape library like my diagram shows here the tape the backup server then encodes that backup job with all the tape encoding scheme material depending on the vendor that you've got so it really does kind of do a little translation there and says okay we need to put this data in that's coming in the form of backup in this tape format that we're going to lay out to a tape library. Well, with Exagrid, you simply just take your appliance, you're going to plug it in, of course, and there's a little install wizard that you walk through, and uh, you'll give it an IP address, a host name, and a grid name, which is something unique to us. You can call it, you know, your company name dash, you know, uh, Salt Lake or whatever you want to call it. And then uh, the system's going to reboot, you plug it into your switch, and then you're going to go back into the web interface on our system and you're going to create a share or a folder okay this is the same as if you had a folder you want to create at your desktop at work that you're going to share to a coworker to share a file it's literally that easy you're just going to go into the web interface create a folder call it backup one backup two whatever you want to call you know you can create a couple folders however you want to do it and then you're going to go to your backup software and you're going to go in and you're going to say depending on the software for example i i, I saw Commvault, you know, in the room. Commvault is called a magnetic library. It, that's the component you're going to use, and you're you're going to click on that. When it comes up, it's going to ask you for a name. You can give it a name, Exagrid, for this example, and then it's going to ask you for a path, which is the UNC path that you're going to set up going to the share that you set up on your Exagrid. Wow, how easy is that? It's like slash slash IP address host name or slash share that you created. Backup one. Once you've done that, you'll say how many concurrent jobs typically, and you're done. You know, then you're pointing your backup jobs to that device target you just created, and literally you have just now can finish configuration. So our typical deployments, hour, hour and a half, you know, they're just not long and lengthy. It's typically what happens is you'll get the system in and you'll maybe rack mount it in the morning, uh, spend an hour, and then you'll be backing up that night. To that extra good system it's just that easy of deployments for us so uh, now of course all your backups now are flying over high-speed Ethernet to, to our system if you want you can have another system another exit in another site like I've talked about and I'll go into more depth on this and then we can replicate off-site to that system and replication is built in and I'll, I'll talk about that more how are we doing so far and uh, install sounds very challenging you're gonna have to get out the manual aren't you no I mean hopefully I've made it sound really simple and it is I try not to over you know dramatize it because it is it's just a it's just a simple process to do installations it is designed to be an appliance something simple to put in 
So with that, then we'll, oh, what is Exagrid's secret sauce? Well, the secret sauce really comes down to that deduplication and compression technology that I told you that we build into the product. And that is really you know, where our IP is at. Uh, we've got several patents around this that's not external software. It's all our own code built in-house. Uh, I remember the early days of Exagrid when I would fly back to Boston, which is where corporate headquarters, it's actually in Westboro. Uh, ironically, right across the freeway from EMC. But anyway, um, I would go back and, and uh, the, I remember one time I was with, uh, walked into Dave Terry in office, he's our CTO, and there was a couple of young guys in there and, and he goes, oh Ron, come on in, let me introduce you to, can't remember their names, and I was like Matt and John, I'm like, oh, hi guys, and, yeah, these two guys are from MIT, we're going over a new algorithm. I'm like, oh, okay. The math just left. You know, I, I, I did calculus three. I said, sorry, I can't really help. You know, because these guys had formula stuff on the board that, that was way beyond me. But it was like uh, fun stuff that they were doing in the way of uh, coming up with algorithms and things like that. And they, we've always been fine tuning that process. So, and, and working on it. But really what it is, and you can imagine that it works perfectly in the backup environment is Deduplicate, in fact, who's gonna give me my 30 second, what is deduplication? Somebody help me out with that one. Yes, sir. Not having to repeat the data over and over in your back. Perfect, thank you. That's really all it is. And, and uh, fortunately for us in this room, the dealing with backups, that's what backups are. It's repetitive data that just gets backed up over and over again every week, usually in a weekly fold or something like that, right? And so deduplication technology is awesome because it takes, just like you said, all that redundancy out. Now, some companies do it at the block level, okay? Some companies do it at the byte level. Some companies do it at the file level, single instant store, restore, or single instant store. Uh, so, I mean, there's various levels to do that. Exagrid's patented technology is on byte level deduplication, okay? So that's, that's why we don't have to get all, get all these uh, lawyers in a room to, to say that we're doing it like somebody else. But, but what it means is that you can now store lots and lots of stuff in a little bitty space, right? That's really what it's about. And, and as part of that deduplication, a lot of companies, including ourselves, will use compression as well as part of that process. So we use compression and deduplication, but a lot of times those numbers will get rolled in, up into one number for your data. So that's, that's what our special sauce is. So let's go back to our goal, which was fast as possible backups. So as we thought about this, we thought, well, <clears throat> how were most organizations taking an approach at this? And uh, when we looked at the, the one company actually who shipped a product before we did, they decided to do what's called inline deduplication. They were gonna gather up the data, they were gonna divide it up into lots of little pieces in stream and send it to a disk target. Now the advantages to that is that you don't use a lot of disk, right, at the disk target because everything landing on disk is gonna be deduplicated. The disadvantage is, is the backup window is gonna be open the whole time that process is streaming to disk. So we thought, okay, you've got some great technology deduplication, but you missed solving the problem. And the solving the problem was what? I mentioned it a couple times already. <clears throat> Shortest possible backup window, right? And so that's where we felt like, okay, there's really nothing faster than taking a file and moving it from point A to point B. Let's do it that way. So we decided at Exagrid, we're gonna look like a disk target. We just look like any other disk. And the backup software lands it on us as fast as possible. So that's kind of the two models that you see here on the screen. You see my competitors and the way everybody else does it in kind of an inline fashion. Again, it's to save on the amount of disk. Of course, you need a high-end processor and CPU to be able to do all that, but that's what they chose. We just wanted to look like disk. Get your backups off your environment, get your data off your environment as fast as possible and put them on a target. That's really the goal, is to get that backup window as short as possible. Now, how does this affect backup window? Because this is where every vendor is going to claim that they're the fastest possible product. And what we know when we apply compression and deduplication to different data types, guess what? It compresses and deduplicates at different rates, doesn't it? We've all tried doing this. In fact, I won't even let you raise your hand because I know several of you have tried to zip a zip file before. Okay, maybe not some of the younger ones, but I know this older guys have tried to do it. 
thinking, oh, I, I bet I could zip it again and it'll fit on that floppy then, you know. What happened to that zip file when we tried to compress it a second time? <coughs> it got bigger, didn't it? Yeah, it, it, it just didn't, it didn't get smaller, it got bigger. And what we find is that different data compresses and deduplicates at different rates. There's no way an inline process can guarantee the same rate for every single backup as it comes in because data is different. And this is where we thought, okay, if we look like disk and we're giving them a solid target and we're literally just going to land the backups as fast as possible, we can have a very consistent number. We can tell you exactly how much time it's going to take to get that data to that disk and then we're going to close the backup window. Once we've closed the backup window, we check some and validate the job because we've been working with all these backup vendors we've been talking about. So we'll do that for the software. So I ask you to turn verification off because my product will do it. And then we're going to take that backup job that we've received, we're going to make a copy of it. And that copy is actually going to be our working copy. That copy is the one we're actually going to then deduplicate to all the other stuff that we've seen before. Okay, does that make sense to everyone in here? So, what are the pros and cons of my process? Well, the pros are, like I just said, I can guarantee you always having the, the fastest backup window. The cons are, my process requires more disk, doesn't it? Because I have to land it and then I have to process it. How do we overcome that part of the equation? Well, first of all, we felt like disk was inexpensive. I mean, some of you have probably built a high-end gaming system or maybe a high-performance server. Was it the Intel processor or was it the hard drive was the most expensive part of that system? Intel doesn't give those processors away. They're the latest and greatest. And we all know we can buy those terabyte drives for how much today? Sub 50 bucks, maybe? At least, I know, 60, 70 bucks at least, right? Hard drive technology takes a dive faster in price than any other component in your system. So we thought, let's leverage that. You know, we can throw some extra drives at the system, at the solution, to make sure that we can always have performance. Now, of course, we wouldn't want to do that if there's negative impacts, like I said. You wouldn't want it to have to take up more rack space. You wouldn't want it to have to take more power in your environment, okay? And you definitely wouldn't want it to cost more because you have more disk. So we've removed all of those barriers at Exagrid. The form factor we use is the exact same form factor you would use with anybody else. And then, of course, the same power requirements and same, uh, and hopefully, uh, as we talk about it, less cost at the end of the day. So we decided to, to kind of do this post-process metaphor. Now, what that does for you is actually sets up a dual zone architecture. So we talk about it actually good having a landing zone where your backups first go to, we actually do all that magic, that deduplication. So in your mind, if you're thinking, I've got a server here and it's logically separated into two areas. I've got this landing area where I'm landing backups and we don't care. We can land backups as fast as we want there. In fact, we want to keep backups there for as long as possible. We want to fill up that whole space because in, in reality, if I come into the office today and I, the first thing I have is a request to do a restore, I'm going to go into the catalog in my backup software and I'm going to select yesterday's backup job and I'm going to say I want this file back. When that request comes into my system, I don't want to have to rehydrate it. I want to simply just give it back to you. Everything in the landing zone is in full backup form. Okay. However your backup software sent it to us, it's in full form sitting there ready to be handed back at a moment's notice with no rehydration. There's nothing faster than that. You're just simply a disk target giving it back. And I typically size all of my solutions to have at least a week of retention sitting in that landing zone. Okay, now remember that landing zone is just, just a disk cache. It's just sitting there, backups are rolling on, rolling off. You don't even have to manage that area. It does its all, all of its magic automatically. And then the retention area, of course, is our working area. That's where we're actually doing our deduplication and compression. That's kind of the heart and soul of the Exagrid appliance. Before I go on, any questions about that? How are we doing? How was lunch, by the way? That looked yummy. It was good? Okay, awesome. Good. Good enough to eat? Good. We'll tell the chef that later. Hey, it was edible today. <laughs> Sure, you appreciate that. All chefs do, you know, as they're throwing large knives at you, right? 
So no, I appreciate that. I'm glad that was good. Um, so that's really what it comes down to is how we get how we make an appliance that's fast backups and also fast restores, but I'm going to put an asterisk around that. I'm going to say fast restores, ultra fast restores for your most recent backup because again, when we go back and, and we started talking to folks like yourselves and saying, hey, what's really important to you? When it came to that restore process, you said you wanted it back fast and you said, it's really important for my most recent data. Yeah, if I had a project a month ago, I still want to get it back fast, but really when I have a server that's down and I need that server to be up as fast as possible, I need it now. I don't want to have to rehydrate that data. And that's what an inline approach gives you. It gives you that, you know, basically everything going in gets deduplicated, everything coming out gets rehydrated. It's a lot of work, a lot of process, and unfortunately a lot of time that goes into that. We've designed the system to be able to have fast, ultra-fast restores from that landing zone. And it's automatic. You don't have to determine where restores are coming from. All that happens on my system behind the scenes. You're just going into the catalog, selecting the backup, and that request comes into my system. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Question? So what you're saying, the latest backup comes back quicker than if you went back several days. And, and quicker could be seconds to maybe minutes, but yes. That's absolutely right. Everything from the landing zone is just going to come back because it's just literally sitting there just like when the backup software handed it to us in the first place. It can come back as quickly as your target can receive it. Okay, where are you going to restore to? And you're absolutely right. If you had to go back and get a restore from a job from a month ago or two month ag months ago, then yeah, we're going to rehydrate that and it's going to take a few more minutes depending on the size of the, the amount of data you're requesting, right? Uh, but really, it's all on disk. That's the best part. It's all a click of a mouse, and that's key. You're not going out and getting tape sets. You're not loading those tape sets, recataloging tape sets. You're literally just going into your backup software, going into your catalog, and clicking restore. Okay, That's the fundamental difference when it comes down to man hours at, in your organization for doing a restore. You're not having to call back tapes. You're not having to reload them, re-index, or do anything about them, or recataloging them. Okay, It's literally click of a mouse. And that's the convenience of having disk space backup. So if you had products uh, like Veeam, uh, if you, anybody looked at them or have them in your environment or know about them. So there's, there's all these traditional backup applications. I'll just tangent real quick and then I'll still be done in, on time. Uh, you've got all your traditional backup applications that have been around for years. We've talked about those. The semantics, Commvaults, and I mean uh, TSM, you know, HP Data Predictor. These companies have been selling backup software for 20 plus years now. And then there's been a newer generation of software companies like Veeam that have come around and said, hey, we're going to focus on just the virtualized environment, okay? Hyper-V and VMware. And so they wrote their product from the ground up to just deal with these newer environments that we're in. And Exegrid's actually taken advantage of that and said, okay, because there's some newer technologies that they've come to market with that some of the legacy players are still trying to catch up to. Uh, I believe they'll have all these features by next year. But they're still, you know, coming them out, coming, bringing them to the market where Veeam was the pioneer for this. But one of the features that you can do with their product is actually take your backup, which is great because we love our backups. But what if that backup could be useful to you in a sense of making it live? standing that data up and having instant access to it. And that's the approach Veeam took to it, and I'm not trying to tout one vendor over another, I'm just trying to really tout the feature set, but essentially, you've got a backup job sitting there as a VM. What if you could literally turn on that VM and make it live in a matter of minutes? Okay, as not only a backup, but now a hot standby or a failover. And that's where backup software is going in, a, in a general, and everybody's moving that way. They happen to just be one of the first to get there. So, basically, Exegrid's working with all the backup applications to go down that road to make sure we're compatible. But one of them today, essentially, you could have your backup sitting on an Exegrid system. Uh, the backup lands, of course, in that landing zone. We'll make a copy in the repository. Sorry if I'm in your way over here. And uh, the copy does get slightly deduplicated and compressed. That's the bottom part that you see there. So that might be backup on day one, right? We, we landed in the system. And then, of course, day two is backup 
back up to and we're going to land that landing zone. We're going to make a copy of that. Now we have some, you know, of course we've got these copies that we're going to then work on deduplicating. We're going to take the original one and actually reduce it down to the bytes that have changed. So we've really got two copies of your backup sitting on our system for redundancy. We want to make sure we protect your data, right? And then all the older ones get, now you're wondering where 20 gig, you know, 200 gig comes from. What we found at the byte level when we start doing our comparison that, it, that most backups, uh, <clears throat> when we look at most environments, I should say, over time have anywhere from a half a percent to 2% byte level change rate. Okay, so what's that mean? That's the actual unique data. So if you're thinking about it in kind of larger terms, if you had a terabyte of data, okay, just a whole bunch of stuff that was a terabyte bit big, once we've deduplicated it over time, the unique portion of that would be about 20 gig. That would be a 2% of it, right? Okay, that's if you're following me in the math. Uh, that's, that's really what we're talking about, is that we would need to store over time. So we're gonna, we're gonna store that information as in this case, 10 terabytes would be 20 gig, or 200 gig, sorry, uh, that would be stored you know, as part of the unique material. Again, the same thing is done uh, just kind of day over day as you start throwing more and more backups into the system. As you can see, we can you know, land 50 terabytes of, of data, and at the end of the day, you know, it's taken up about 5.8 terab you know, uh, terabytes of repository space. Okay, because of that deduplication, that commonality that we can find. And of course, any of those VMs that are sitting in that landing zone could be turned on at a moment's notice and just spun from there and ran. I've, uh, in fact, I just talked to a customer in Florida and they actually had this happen. Their production server went down. It was actually their phone system, their VoIP phone system that was on a, running on a Windows server went down, which of course means the phone won't ring means your business might as well just you know fold up for the day and go home and he said if it wasn't the, for the ability of spinning up that VM and getting it running on his exagrid he would have to send everybody home for the day because you know uh, you know the phones just started working and once he was able to spin everything back up so let's and, and then my last point I want to cover in the last few minutes is that scalable architecture this is why people call us this is kind of the the grid and exagrid right is how we scale and so there's these two architectures that I mentioned early on the first one is what we call scale up architecture it's it's the traditional architecture that you've seen for years in the primary storage space things like the HP EVAs that we talked about earlier or any of those other storage where you have a head unit okay at the top and that's where you have your IO it comes in you've got disk and memory typically that you can well memory and CPU power that, that is in the head unit and then you often add a tray NetApp is a great company they've used this traditional model for many many years now if you if you have NetApp filers for example or even EMC their, uh, their, uh, their products they've used this except for Isilon that works a little different if you're familiar with the Isilon product with EMC but essentially you know you you'll grow this system and uh, until a point where you you can you're pretty much done you can't grow any more disk because the head unit only has so much processing power so much IO that it can handle and so of course the vendor and this is usually when they they call us when Kelly and and I get a call is either two things you one they filled up the system and now the current vendor that they have is saying okay you need to remove the head unit and buy a bigger one well 70% of the cost of that solution right there is where it's all in the brains it's all in that head unit you just replaced those disc shelves are well depending on who you buy them from are relatively cheap compared to that head unit at least that's the architectural design um, and this is what we see day in day out or they've come to you and said you've had your product three years now uh, and guess what? It's time to move on. We've got a new product line. We want you to be on that new product line. So your support costs are now tripled. And so it's kind of a way to force you to upgrade your hardware. And we thought, you know, although that has worked for a lot of companies in the primary storage space, we didn't think it was fair in the backup world because we know in the backup world, you, you use stuff until it no longer works until you've kicked it to the floor, picked it back up, wrapped it with duct tape, with bailing wire, put it back into production, ran for a while, kicked it to the floor again. You've done that two or three times in the backup world, right? With the gentleman we've talked to this morning, right? He goes, I think I've taken apart that tape drive, you know, several times uh, and, and pieced it back together because that's what you do in the backup world. Everything's band-aids and bailing wire to just get it going. 
and you want it to last years and years and years. So we want to have an architecture that would really scale out for you. And that's what we call that, you know, basically our scale out grid architecture. You'll buy a solution that meets your needs today. Now, all of our systems will meet a five hour or less backup window. Doesn't matter whether you're talking the small little one terabyte box or multiple systems in a grid. No backup window if you're using our design practice, in other words, 10 gig if you need it, depending on the data, will no, be no longer than five hours for a backup window, okay? It can be much less, but you know, I'm just gonna give you that promise from us, as long as you can drive the data to us that fast. But your data can double, okay? Your data can double again, and notice nothing happened to the backup window. Okay, because not only are we adding disk, but we're adding CPU and memory to handle the amount of data. But more importantly, I wish this slide showed it, but we're adding ingestion points. We're adding gig E. Okay, we're being able to send data to multiple systems in a grid concurrently. And that would be multiple jobs, multiple backup jobs concurrently to multiple systems, right? It's high I.O. And that's how we're able to really grow a system to meet your needs today as well as when it doubles and triples down the road. It's, I mean, data's like my garage, right? I haven't seen the, that floor in my garage since I think I moved in, you know? My <laughs> wife keeps pulling more and more boxes in there. You know, one of these days I told her I'll be able to fit a car in there, I promise you. But it's just never gonna happen because you just got too much stuff. Now, with Exagrid, we decided we didn't want to do anything proprietary. <coughs> So this little line that you see connecting these units together, simple ethernet. So nothing proprietary to, to, that you have to worry about from us. It's just connecting these boxes uh, one at a time and, or multiples into what we call a grid. This is really, I mean, this is it right here. And this is, this is the money slide. This is why we wanted you to come. Any questions? I mean, because this is really what we're about. Because I can go to my boss if I was in your shoes and say, look, I think I found a product that I can we can invest in today at whatever layer, you know, or level, sorry. We can start off small, we can start off wherever we want, and I can, I can promise that we're gonna keep this investment protection. We're not gonna do the grill break replace, I'm gonna skip that one, I'm gonna go right to here and say here's how I can keep this product that I've purchased and simply just add to it over the years. This is gonna be my legacy of the company. You know, it's not going to be something where uh, we spend a boatload of money and in a couple years we have to throw it away and buy something else. And, and if I leave the organization, they're going to say, oh, th that was Ron's fault. The knucklehead bought them, you know. We learned our lesson. We'll buy somebody else now. No, this is, I mean, I, uh, Kelly said I've been with Exergood eight years. I've sold companies six, seven, eight years ago where the newest appliances fit in their existing grid. Okay. I don't have to sell something and, and run away hoping they never call me back. I want them to, you know, because I know they're going to be happy with their Exhibit system, and I know that when the time comes, they'll just go ahead and expand on their current environment when they need to with the amount that they want to expand to. We're not going to lock them into... You don't have to have the same size appliances like my example, right? You can grow by any one of the units. Okay, questions at this point, because we're almost wrapping up. No questions? How's dessert? Is that a lemon cake? And chocolate? Man. Okay, I'll take one of each to go <laughs> when we leave. That looks really good. So, of course, whether you have one site or multiple sites, everything's managed with the same pane of glass of the browser, right? Just log into any one of our exhibits. You'll have a full view of your whole environment and be able to manage that means you don't have to jump in a plane and head to Las Vegas to your Exagrid there, although you'll probably want to go anyway because the Blue Man Group it was awesome to see. And it's your reason really for going is because you need to fix the server there anyway, right? But, you know, uh, you can manage everything from, from one place. Uh, replication is included in the product. There is no a la carte licensing. In other words, whether you change backup applications in the future or do things differently, uh, you know, or have one site or multiple sites, replications free included in the product. So you just turn it on when you need it. It's, uh, and it's by share, so you can have some data that you say, you know what, we care about this data, but we don't care enough to have it be over there too. I mean, you could tier your data, right? And another data you could say, hey, we love it here and we need to protect it off site, so we're gonna have it go to this share and I'm gonna replicate by share. So we can then configure that as well. 
so de you know replication of course we're just replicating the the bytes that have changed so we're very WAN friendly and this is where it really matters I gotta tell you I get a lot of calls from folks that are like well should I use deduplication in my software or should I use the Exacute appliance Ex appliances always give you a lot better deduplication than the software vendors have it's just a plain fact I apologize I don't want to sound too biased here but software vendors just haven't dialed up the deduplication because really it comes down to pro processing performance they would kill your backups if they could do all the deduplication they'd really like to do uh, because it's so CPU intensive so the appliances always do a much better job so what does that mean to you it means if you're looking at let's say I'm, I'm thinking about doing you know going to disk versus an exagrid and you were going to use the software deduplication let's say they get half of what I get that means twice as much disk right that you're gonna have to buy that also means twice as much bandwidth getting to your remote site when you go to replicate so these are things that you know you may not think about initially but as you go down the road you're thinking okay these are things why, reasons why appliances just lend themselves to be a a little bit more efficient when it comes to replication than, than, uh, than software vendors out there. I'm not going to go through the web interface because we're done. And uh, this is where I'm just going to give you an open invitation. Say one, thank you for coming today. We really do appreciate you coming and sharing lunch with us. And two, you know, I want to invite you to follow up with us and TNS to say, when can we do a demo? And this way I can set up a WebEx with you when, when it's convenient for you and we'll talk about your environment. In fact, I'll be happy to bring up your backup software. On, you know, I've got a little VM host environment. I've got all the backup applications. I can bring up Semantic or Commvault or whoever you want. I can bring it up and basically show you how it links up to the backup software to our product. And we can do that in an interactive demo. It takes about 20, 30 minutes. It's uh, not too much. but. Uh, you know, this is this is an open invitation for you to see how the product works uh, and how it would connect up to your environment. Daily email reporting. Uh, each appliance has RAID 6. Uh, I should have brought something to th give away, but RAID 6 for the, the trivia question for the day, for the tech heads. What is that? Anyone? Dual parity. Dual parity. Thank you. Dual parity means double two drives of failover. Okay, RAID 5 gives you one, right? RAID 6 gives you two drives of failover. Now, of course, you know, being exagrid, that wasn't good enough, so we got to throw in a third drive. So we do actually have in each appliance RAID 6 that gives you the two drives, plus we've thrown in a hot spare on every system. So the hot spare is going to kick in way before the RAID does, so it's kind of nice. You've got three drives of failover in every appliance to protect your data. We've got dual power supplies in every appliance as well. So, and everything's hot swappable from the front and the back, right? You can, uh, the way, uh, oh, it uh, does have phone home capability that's included. I was just going to say, the way support works, and man, now I'm over by 30 seconds. Uh, hopefully you won't criticize me too much. I'll take another minute and a half of your time. Uh, the way support works at Exerid, we really do value our customers. I know a lot of companies say that, but our support is ranked uh, as high as Apple, which is amazing. Uh, but, but what we do is, you know, when we get an order from you, uh, we actually assign you a, a support engineer. Okay, and that's a U.S. based person. Unfortunately, it's Boston, so they have accents and they're all Red Sox fans. Um, so if you don't like the Red Sox, you know, don't get them talking about baseball or, or the Patriots, right? Um, and they do have a little bit of an accent, right? But um, anyway, they're, they're great uh, folks that we have back there. But we assign you a support rep. Uh, when, when we get a, an order, they just go ahead and they'll go, they give you a call. Uh, and they'll say, hey, my name is Pete. Uh, you know, I'm your support engineer. When would you like to do the installation? You can say, well, the boxes are supposed to arrive you know, next week or whatever. I'll give you a call. Or you can say, Thursday at 5. You'll say, great, I'll call you at Thursday at 5. And uh, Pete calls you up. He'll walk you through the installation stuff that I talked about earlier. And then he'll walk you through configuring it with your backup software. Now, Pete's been assigned to you because we've told him what backup app you have. So he's an expert in that. So he's going to help you get everything configured. So, and then when Pete's done, he's going to say, hey, by the way, I'm your assigned support engineer. Here's my phone number. Here's my email. When you have questions you know, down the road, just let me know. I'll be happy to help. That way you're not calling into a phone center and, hi, you know, and three layers later, you're finally getting to explain your question, you get right to Pete's desk, okay? And if Pete's on vacation, he's got a, he's got a backup for Pete, right? Um, that, that somebody that'll, that'll take, take his place while he's there. But this just assignment of a support rep, I gotta tell you, I just, 
how many times I travel around seeing existing customers and they'll just say, you know, by the way, I talked to Pete, he's awesome. He, you know, I mean, because backup's really one of those things you want to delegate, right? And, or at least offload as much as you can. And it's great when you have somebody you can call and ask questions about backup and all sorts of environments, you know, and, and get some good help there. So uh, feel free to do that as well. So that's, that's pretty much support. Support comes in two flavors, 8x5, uh, 7x24. You could choose whatever flavor you want. Uh, you still get Pete assigned to you. Uh, and then, of course, Pete's waking up and going to sleep on the mountain time zone. So you don't need to worry about waking him up or keeping him you know, from a pressing engagement. He actually works this hour zone uh, back in Boston. And so uh, that's just how, how it works. And, and, of course, calling Pete, getting hardware, getting any software updates, that's all included under what we call our umbrella pro program. It's not really warranty on the box, it covers everything. So you're protected uh, all the way around with software, hardware, support, phone home is all included. Uh, that's 15% of the net purchase price, okay? Net being whatever you beat us up on, right? Makes that price lower for you, okay? And so uh, that's how we roll. Any, any other questions for me before I turn it over? Because I think we want to give something away, right, Kelly? Yeah. Excellent. You and Sharon want to do that? Or do we have somebody else signed up to do the giveaway? We didn't. We didn't? We do want to give something away, I think. But I want so 